Aloha, this is Alika with Hawaii eFoil Experience. Today's video is going to cover the top five mistakes that we see with our students as well as other eFoil riders in, when they're learning how to ride this board. There are many mistakes, but these are the top five. We're going to cover each one by one, explain what's going on and how to fix it, and then we're going to demonstrate it for you in the water. So let's go. Okay, so the first mistake that we see that's most common with our students as well as other riders is going too slow. Too slow is not gonna give you enough stability on the board. It also won't allow you to get up on foil either. We'll demonstrate this for you in the water and let's see how, what the results are and what the signs are. So let's see how this looks. This is Donovan on the e-foil. Gonna demonstrate for us too slow. In a prone position, not a big deal. Okay, you're not going to be going that fast, it's not that scary, but as you get out to your knees, going too slow, it might be harder to balance because you don't have a lot of stability from the speed. The correction is to get more speed. As you get more speed, it's actually a lot easier. It's kind of like riding a bike too slow. It's very hard to control. When you get enough speed, it's very easy to balance. Now we go too slow standing up. Too slow standing up. Again, it, it's kind of kind of difficult to balance your board. The nose starts to come up on you, and it's hard hard to keep that maintain that level board. The correction is to get more speed. More speed will look like the board is skimming across the water without coming up into the air. And it's much easier, again, to maintain your balance. Nice job, Donovan. Okay, now the second mistake that we see so often is having our riders too far back on the board. That's both in the prone position as well as the kneeling and standing positions. When you're too far back, you're gonna cause the board to stall. Or if you're too far back, but you have enough speed, you're actually gonna get into the air and you're gonna be out of control. So we'll show you how that looks and how to fix it. Again, Dom is gonna demonstrate for us too slow or too far back in the prone position. So you see how his nose is up and now you're doing pull-ups to try to get your body forward, okay? When you're too far back, it's very difficult. The correction is, move your body forward. Move your body forward so that the board stays level. With a level board, it's way easier to control this board. It's much more fun, and you're gonna learn how to ride the e-form much easier. If we go too far back on our knees, again, have enough speed, see how that nose doesn't come up? And Donovan intuitively is pushing it back down. If you're too far back, can you sit on your heels? Yeah, that nose comes flying up in the air, and now he's sitting on the tail. Very difficult. So he sits back there, that's also a bad position. So the correction, <laughs> that happens when you're too far back as well. The board goes out of the water, onto the foil. Okay, the correction is, get your body forward. Ideally, you want your knees in front of the handles, and now you're skimming across the water. Okay? Now, standing and too far back, this is gonna be difficult for Donovan. Too far back, yeah, that nose comes up. Okay, the nose comes up and comes up. It's very difficult to keep your balance. Donovan is actually quite agile, so he can handle this. Most of us will be in the water by now. Okay, the correction is move your body forward. That back foot specifically needs to be between the handles. Okay, there's a very specific issue that happens when you're on your feet and you're too far back. It's called the stall. And most people just try to pull the trigger more and more. All that does is create a bigger and bigger stall. Now stall is where there's not enough lift to overcome the drag that you're creating with the position of the foil. Typically the foil is just has a too high of an angle of attack. Okay, so you have to get the nose down, which gives the foil level, and that's the correction. So we'll see how that looks with Donovan demonstrating. So this is Donovan too far back. Can't overcome it with, with power. That's a, he's stalling there, trying to get, he got the trigger all the way down. The correction is to get your body forward. He's gonna move his feet forward and use the same speed, and he'd be nice and easy, the board's skimming across the water now. 
Okay. Okay, go up on foil. Level foil. That's what we want it to look like. The board should be level, not with the nose up, but the nose is level to the tail. Okay. He's a little bit nose high. He's going too slow. <laughs> Here comes the stall. He's going to do a stall now on the foil. There, there's a the stall. That's on foil stall. But he's too far back. He moved his feet forward. Now it's much easier. Okay. Okay, our third mistake that's most common and what we see with E4 riders is riding too high on the foil. When you ride too high on the foil, normally you're either going to breach your motor or your foil and that brings you down to the bar water very quickly or you can end up losing control. We'll show you how this looks in the water and how to fix it. This happens a lot. Especially after the student gets his first sense of flight on the foil, they love it. They want to go get some more of it. And they think that by putting pressure on the back foot, it gives you more foil time. Um, and it doesn't. It just gets you higher and higher and higher. So we'll show you too high on the foil. Let's see what Dominic does. Dominic's on foil. Having such a good time, you get back foot pressure. Back foot pressure gets higher and higher and higher. And out the motor comes out. You saw that motor come out? We'll try to do that again. Look how high I am! And you fly higher and higher. What happens is the motor breaches, whoa! And a crash happens. <laughs> what happens is the motor breaches, which means you lose thrust. If you lose thrust at your speed, you means you're gonna lose lift, and you're gonna come straight back to the water. It is recoverable, but we see students do this over and over and over again. The correction is don't stay on your back foot. Get on your back foot, bring the foil, get bring the board onto foil, and then get your weight back to the neutral position between your two feet. Okay, so we'll show, show you how that looks when you're coming up onto foil and then creating a level foil. There you go. So you got the right speed, the right amount of pressure, levels up the board, and that's what we want. If you put too much pressure on the back, you get higher and higher. So you breach. The correction is to get back to the water, reset your body and level out the board. When you're ready, come on foil a little and then level out the board again. Nice job, Donovan. The fourth mistake that we see so often is bad posture. Bad posture goes across just about every board sport. If you don't have the right posture, you can't ride comfortably or efficiently. Most of the time, we see people hinge forward at their waist, so they put extra pressure on their toe side, which is always gonna push you to the toe side of the board. If you see yourself falling always onto your face, or you see yourself constantly turning in a circle, that can be an easy indication that you have poor posture. We'll show you what it looks like, and how it should look, and how much better it'll be when you're riding. They think that by getting a lower upper body, they have more stability, where that's not true. What you need to do is lower your whole body if you want more stability. Lower your center of gravity by bending at the knees, not at the waist. So, Donovan is going to show you bad or poor posture, and then the posture that is ideal for riding your foil. Let's see what he has. So this is poor posture. See how he's bending way forward? All the pressure is on his toes, and he's trying to compensate. Typically, you'll be turning towards your toe side, or falling towards your toe side. And the, the right posture, the correct posture, is to be upright. You actually want to stand very natural. Stack your head over your shoulder, your, your head over your shoulder, your shoulder over your hips, your hips over your feet. That allows you to be very comfortable, doesn't give you a backache, and actually gives you quite a controllable ride. There you go. We see this a lot, where the student is bent over, thinking they're surfing, thinking they're keeping very good posture by bending over and, and lowering their center of gravity. All they're doing is lowering their sight, lowering their upper body. What they should be doing is relaxing. Stand tall, keep flexing your knees, keep flexing your hips, but relax in a very comfortable posture over your feet. Nice job, Donovan! Woo! Our fifth common mistake that we're gonna to cover today is turning with your toes. This is very common, especially for those who ride skateboards, snowboards, or surfboards. They're very used to turning with the toe pressure or some heel pressure, and that's not the best way to turn on the e-foil when you're initially starting. Yes, as an advanced rider, you're definitely gonna be engaging your toe and your heel pressure, as well as using the rest of your body, but if you're first starting, 
it's better to use a shoulder turn. We'll demonstrate that for you. We'll demonstrate why the, there's a problem turning with your toe side or your toe pressure, and we'll show you what's the best way to do it. Pressure. So turning with your toes is your fifth mistake. On the foil board, any foil board, whether it's the E-foil, prone foil, or sub-foil, if you push with your toes and your heels, then you're just gonna roll the board. Or the board's not designed to stay on the water. You're not using your rail and your tail to turn your board. The foil underwater does all of the control. So we have to turn the foil, not the board. So if you get away from pushing with your toes, you'll be better off. So let's see what he looks like. Donovan's gonna come riding at us, and he's gonna be on foil, and you're gonna see the result of him putting toe pressure and no toe pressure. Toe pressure and no toe pressure. So let's see what he has. Okay, so he's on foil. You see how that board is wobbling? That literally is toe pressure, no toe pressure. Toe pressure, no toe pressure. He's not trying to turn. He's just pushing with his toes, okay? It's very difficult to keep your balance that way. That is the wobble that we talk about. The wobble. We just definitely don't want that. So often, our students get up onto foil, and they lose that mindset that they need to relax the toes and turn with the shoulders and they end up with that wobble and they go right back in the water as soon as you can relax that you'll be okay turning should be with your shoulders only watch donovan come in shoulder turns shoulder turns it's a shoulder turn i see how the board stays level it doesn't rock and roll donovan level board nice and easy toe here comes toe pressure again, turning with the toe. See that board's wobbling all over the place. And then without the toe, he's going to turn left and he's going to turn right. The board stays nice and level. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Those are your top five mistakes that we see with the e-foil, especially when you're learning. Whether you're out with a coach, you're out with friends, or are you just trying it for your first time on your own? Take your time, take these tips, and avoid those mistakes. The problem with making these mistakes too often is that you're gonna fall, you're gonna hit the board, the mass, or the foil, it's gonna hurt you. We definitely don't want that to happen. We're looking out for everyone's safety in the water, whether you're on an e-foil or just swimming around. Hope these pointers are helpful for you. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate. Give us a call, send us an email, drop a comment down below, and we'd be happy to help you out. Aloha from Hawaii, eFoil Experience.